Everybody wants a hero. Everybody needs a friend. Mm, a shoulder to lean on. Everybody needs a helping hand. Well, you ought to try Jesus. Said he's just a prayer away. See, he can make your burdens light. Turn your midnight. In the day, yeah. he's so much more than a healer. When you're feeling kind of down, said he's more than able. I know, I know he can turn your life around. Good evening, and welcome to our evening Bible class. We hope and pray that something's being said that you can use in your everyday lives. Now let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace just to say thank you. Thank you for many, your many and wonderful blessings, oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for allowing us to come out and study a portion of your word. Father God, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to worship you and understand your word the way you would want us to understand. Father God, we just ask you to be with our sick and shut in at this time. We just pray that you will just be with them as they uh, try to have a reasonable portion of health strength to come back and, and worship with us, oh, Heavenly Father. Father God, we just thank you and we love you. Thank you for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do in our lives. For this is our prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study right here at the South Union Church of Christ. Now, family, you know we rise to give God glory and we still rise to give him praise for our great God is, in fact, worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Now we pray that this message finds you and your family doing well at this time. Who's excited that the Lord woke them up this morning? Who's excited that the Lord has started them on their way? Is there anyone here who is grateful, who is thankful, who is appreciative that no one but the Lord has kept you and covered you? He has provided you safe passage from point A to point B. Perhaps you're at home right now, you're commuting right now, uh, wherever you are found, we know that God is in the blessing business and he's worthy of all of our praise. So listen, if you are tuned in and you are visiting this channel, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. We are delighted and excited to have you come our way. Now, if you'd be so kind, share this message with as many of your family and friends as you possibly can. We believe that as God pours into us, he wants us to pour those blessings along to someone else as well. And now to my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ, you already know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it still is to be a child of the King. Now, for those that are with us on tonight, we have been studying from Galatians, the sixth chapter. We're going to continue in that study and we're going to continue in that lane. But on tonight, we've got a real, real good study. I pray that you will share this message and I hope that it encourages everyone who takes a listen and everyone who uh, studies with us as well. 
Here we go. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Turn there with me. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to focus our attention on tonight, beginning with verse number 9. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Underscore that if you can. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Family, we want to pitch our tent in the theme, thought, and study, the church in real time. The church in real time. Now, we have been studying from the book of Galatians for the last couple of weeks. And while reading and studying this particular pericope of scripture, uh, we ran across verse nine. And uh, we have given some insight, even on last week, to the context of verse nine, all the way up back to verse one. And we're trying to provide some illumination for our consideration that we read the text within the context and allow the text to reveal what the takeaway really is. Well, on tonight, we're going to broach a subject that I'm sure we probably have not heard much about within church settings. Now we've heard some about it, but you don't hear many sermons preached from the pulpit you possibly don't hear many classes taught that are centered around this subject. But I pray that as we study together, that God will open up our understanding, that he will brighten our paths, that he will illuminate uh, his word, his will for our lives, and that we can leave here with our heads held high, knowing that whatever situation we encounter in our lives, God can bring us out. Amen. God can bring us out. As a matter of fact, before we even get into the text, if you would plug that into the live chat, God can bring us out. Someone says out of what? Out of whatever we are going through. He has the power. And so because he has the power, we have to possess the faith. Are you with me? All right, now this is a study that's going to require our patience, our due diligence, and our consideration. And we're gonna study the subject of depression. Depression. Plug that into the live chat if you can. The subject of depression. It hinges based on verse nine. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. New King, New King James Version says, we shall reap if we faint not. Now, as we begin this subject, I want to plug in here that depression is real. Plug that into the live chat if you can. Depression is real. Now, perhaps there's someone thinking, Brother Preacher, we're supposed to be speaking about um, biblical terms and biblical situations, and you're supposed to be teaching a lesson that pertains to biblical ideas, concepts, realities, and subjects. And someone may say, well, I don't see depression written in my Bible. I don't see depression written uh, in verse nine. However, the concept of depression is a biblical uh, reality. And there are biblical figures, biblical characters who endured depression, who had situations that were heavy on their shoulders and on their hearts. And God used them still in mighty ways to do great things. But the reason that we're discussing and studying from this subject is because it's a biblical concept. As a matter of fact, depression, here it is, 
is spiritual, it is physical, it is psychological, and it is physiological. That is, depression involves the entire makeup of mankind. Amen? Body, mind, and soul. Everything about us uh, that when we experience depression, it touches all areas of our lives. But here it is. We all need to be honest in here because I know how we have grown up, growing up in a church community, growing up in a community of faith. Many times this subject was taboo. Amen. You don't talk about what you're going through uh, physiologically or psychologically or mentally, you, emotionally. You don't talk about that. We, we expressed just go to church, amen, uh, love the Lord, and this is going to take care of itself. But my question is, while that is true, that God is going to take care of us, because when we make that statement, I believe that's what we're reaching for. We know God has all power. He's sovereign. He has all control, and we know he's going to help us. But the question is, how can we deal with it from a human perspective and how can we come out of it when we use God's word and put God's word on the issue? In other words, we cannot, here it is, be dismissive of mental illness, mental disorders. Uh, we have to evaluate our own mental health. And perhaps we need to seek out the help or the assistance of a professional. Amen. When it all comes back, we are dealing with this every single day. We deal with it in our communities. We deal with it in our families. We deal with it even in the church. And so I believe as we open up this dialogue, we have to get real that the church is dealing with real issues and it's about time that the church addresses it biblically. Are you ready for this? All right, it's time to go to work. Galatians chapter six and verse nine. And let us not grow weary, underscore that phrase, grow weary. The context, while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart according to the new king james version i want to read from the amplified version and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right for in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Do you hear that in the text? Listen to the weightiness of that. We don't want to lose courage. We don't want to relax. We don't want to faint. We don't want to grow weary in our well-doing. Depression involves weariness. Now, when we speak of weariness, we're not speaking of necessarily physical fatigue only, but it also includes mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, we are drained. We are exasperated. We are empty. We are running low on fumes. We are running low on courage. We are running low on hope. We are running low on outlook and perspective that is positive. We begin to dwindle in our spirit and in our capacity to continue to move on forward because of the weightiness of the situation that we're in or the stress that we're under, we are stretched to the limit. Come on, someone. We are going through times of distress, which speaks to the soul. 
You see, a person can look like everything is okay on the outside, but in the inner part, in the inner recesses of their soul, their soul could be running on fumes. Are you with me? The soul could be almost at level E, running low, um, trying to make sense of it all, trying to balance, trying to juggle, trying to see your way through a time of testing, a time of distress, a time of disappointment, a time of misfortune, a time of setback, a time of suffering, sorrow, and sadness, because you're trying to process it all. And so your spirit grows weary. Your spirit grows low. Let me ask this question. How many of us have dealt with depression in our lives? Let me see who's going to be honest in here. How many of us, us have dealt with depression? How many of us have dealt with depression for an elongated period of time? I mean, you have thought about things. It has brought you down. You are, you are in a low how many people have gone through that? How many people have experienced that? Can we get real in here on tonight? Because it is natural for us as humans to go through times where our spirit is low, where our courage has dwindled, where our hope begins to seemingly fizzle out. That's normal to go through, to pass through seasons of disappointment, seasons of sorrow and sadness. That is common to man. What we have to do is allow our spirit to come up and not be suppressed by the situations that we experience by holding our spirit down at all times. You see, it's, it's normal to go through it, but watch it the action. I'm going through. I'm walking. I'm going in, but I'm coming out. The danger with depression happens when we stay in that low moment, when we stay in that low mode, when we stay in that low condition. Are you with me? Now, watch this. Depression, even by researchers uh, and physicians, they say that Depression is usually not brought on by one specific incident, disappointment, bad experience. But depression is usually brought on by consecutive negative experiences, by a succession of sorrow, sadness, and setback. Which means that the person has been through some things. Therefore, that's where the weariness of soul kicks in because you're going up a mountain and then when you get to the top, boom, there's another valley waiting on you and you hit rock bottom again. You climb back up. You're climbing. You're climbing. You reach the top. Boom. Another valley low and you're right back where you were in the beginning. And so after series and series of blows and damages um, uh, or damage to your uh, psyche, it damages your soul because you've had blow after blow after blow after blow. That's where this term of weariness kicks in. So you begin to feel drained. You begin to feel stretched. You begin to feel weak. You begin to feel alone. You, you feel that you're running out of options. Are you with me? The church in real time. Now, let us look at some statistical data and research that shows us depression is real. Put that into the live chat again. Depression is real. If you haven't already put it in, depression is real, somebody. Amen. Here it is. Depression is a major contributor to mortality, morbidity, disability, and economic costs within the United States. 
Data regarding depression within the U.S. reveals that according to a 2022 National Health Interview Survey, 4.7% of adults age 18 and older have regular feelings of depression. Furthermore, there are 15 million physician office visits where depressive disorders are the primary diagnosis. Depression equals 12.5% of total emergency department visits and they are linked to signs and symptoms of depression. A 2021 study on mortality indicates that the number of suicide deaths in the United States of America exceeds 49,000 deaths. Per 100,000 people in population, this equals to 14.8 deaths that are directly linked to suicide. Depression is real. Someone may be thinking, what is depression? Well, depression can be defined as a constant feeling of sadness and loss of interest. This loss of interest stops you from doing your normal activities. Depressive disorder, also known as depression, is a common mental disorder. It involves a depressed mood or a loss of interest in activities for long periods of time. In fact, there are four types of depression. There's situational, biological, psychological, and existential, each of which has its own primary causes. These classifications often overlap and are meant to add insight to diagnosis and treatment. We must take depression seriously. Let me say that again. We must take depression seriously. Turn with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Depression is a Bible issue. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Underscore that if you can. And his countenance fell. This is in the New King James Version. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well. Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And it's desire for you, but you should rule over it. Now I want to read this same text from the Amplified Version. The text reads here, verse 5, But for Cain, and his offering, he had no respect or regard. So Cain was exceedingly angry and indignant, and he looked sad and depressed. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, 
but you must master it. Oh, family, there's a lot of good teaching in this text. I want us to reach to this pericope of scripture for a reason, for intention, for purpose. And the purpose is for us to see that there is a biblical record of depression and when we see it form and of course affect mankind. It's right here in the text. You have Adam and Eve, the humans that God loved and created. And within the first family mentioned in the Bible, you have depression on the scene. You have mental health that is called in the central view of humanity. You have two brothers. You have strife. You have disappointment. You have failure. You have a person who feels, if you will, disrespected, disregarded dejected and this precipitates a depressive mood are you following what I'm saying so now someone says is depression a biblical subject it absolutely is now just like great sitcoms and great shows that we've watched on TV for years. <laughs> Stay tuned to next week's Bible study. <laughs> we're going to dig even deeper because what we're going to see is that number one, depression is real. It affects us. But God's will for us is to master whatever can pull us down. Mm. Some good study in this. And I pray that you're here for the ride. All right. We have to stop right here. But I want to encourage someone as we close out tonight's uh, lesson. I want to encourage someone who may be going through a time of depression. Don't you give up. Don't feel like you are not important. Don't you feel that uh, you're not worthwhile because you are. And if you are a child of God, a child of the King, the Lord has for us everything that we need so that we can conquer whatever we may be experiencing that's trying to pull us down. Amen. Keep your head up. We love you. You already know this. And there's not a what? A thing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. Listen, we have enjoyed studying with you on tonight. We look forward to studying with you again on next week. The Church in Real Time. Focus subject, depression, and how God can work with us and how God can bring us out. Amen. Share this message with a friend. Bring someone back to this Bible study and let them know that God is able so we can remain stable. Hallelujah to the high name of Jesus. Listen, if you'd like to partner with us in prayer for the Bible study, don't hesitate. Give us a call. Reach out to us by email. The information is right here at the bottom of the screen. Until next time, we pray that you have a peaceful, prosperous, and productive week. Always remember, right here at South Union, we love you, and there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord. Have a great week, and good night.